Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. All right, shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rekai, Kodash. Yahweh, to His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior, who's in double honors to the apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone, who taught me the truth, and salutations to the elect, scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. All right, my name is Amor Gabar, and I'm back with another quick lesson. Low ones, edifying, straight to the point. Quick, edifying, straight to the point. And I was having technical difficulties earlier with the first attempt to go live so low willing low willing this isn't bad if the stream is still if the stream is still choppy just let me know if it's that bad let me know but if it's tolerable then i'm just gonna go with it you know i was at a lake front still there but i was at, you know, at the other side of the lake you know which is one of my spots so i had to come to a more I guess open area to get better reception and better service. You know, I want it to be outside of the vehicle, but you know, it's all good. I'm inside the truck. And the word is what's more, more important to hell with the scenery. But for my own sake, I just wanted to, you know, it's nice out. I want to get that vitamin D from the sun and a little change of scenery. But anyway, as you see in the title, um, it says, evil shall slay the wicked. All right, evil shall slay the wicked. And that's from a precept. That's from a line taken from the book of Psalms 34, which I'm going to read the book of Psalms 34 in verse 7 on down to the last verse. And that'll pretty much be the lesson and whatever brothers, you know, may put up on the comment section on the, on the live stream comment board. I may grab a couple of those as well. And... You know, keep the word, keep the word pushing and pumping, you know, through the spirit. And of course, you how about me outside, broke a thumb to the Akim out there. You know, the, the righteous brothers doing his work faithfully and truthfully, you know, because our righteousness is of faith at the end of the day. You know, and Lord willing, being part of Yahweh Shai's first fruits, you know, those that are going to be elected to be saved out of the coming destruction, you know, as well as the few sincere Aquath. Yum, out here in Babylon the Great that are doing what they got you know to make their calling and election sure you know so to speak so and also too there was a video I had seen there was a video I had seen on um, the bro the elder bro Manata Zagba had put it up it was a matter of fact a brother had sent in a chat I think a day or two ago I played a couple seconds of it and I, I just turned that shit off you know, because what this, what this biatch was blabbing about is just total bullshit. But, you know, it made me think of this uh, scripture right here. And I'm, I'll probably show you the video. Matthew chapter 12, 36 is the scripture that come to mind. And this is out of Yahweh Shai's mouth, all right? This is the red letter. And Yahweh Shai said, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So every idle word that man, women speak, men, men in general, all right, as a whole, every idle word that you speak, you have to give account for that in the day of judgment. All right, for by thy words, by your words, you will be justified, and by your very own words, you shall be condemned. All right, so everybody out here, you know, in, in, in this lustful, nonchalant, YOLO life world called Babylon the Great, that are just doing what they want, saying what they want, in the day of judgment, they will have to give account for those acts and actions. All right? So I'm going to play a couple couple like a minute or something like that from this one video that the brother had put up and then i'm gonna proceed with the precepts that i have and the title of the brother's video is please let me go to hell and it's a response to this woman or lack thereof speaking and spewing madness but hey every other word you know what i'm saying well you know how, how surprised can we be 
you know, by the words that come out of these Fifil's mouths. So I'll play it right here and you can listen. Go out. Please let me go to hell. I'm about to go out, but I had to make this video before I leave. Please let me go to hell. I'm about to go out, but I had to make this video before I leave. Also, y'all never really get to see my body. Um, yeah, I'm fine as fuck, if you didn't already know. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know why Christians have this mindset of, I have to save everyone. Let us go to hell. Let let us burn. What, what, why are you so gung-ho on doing this to the point where you feel the need to push it on people, hurt people, kill people, just because you have to learn about God? I don't fucking care. Just stop. Y'all always trying to convert a motherfucker. Doesn't it say it in your... Well, for one, as we already know, there's no such place as hell as far as you go and burn for all eternity for your sins, all right? Hell is talking about the grave. And in this particular this particular case, hell will be the hellfire that's coming from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai via the way of the ICBM missiles. That's the hell. That's hell. All right. If you want to talk about hell and the lake of fire, the lake of fire and hell is synonymous with each other. Then is the destruction by ICBM nuclear fire. And she asked, she said, let me go to hell. So you know what? To the grave, you shall go. To the to the ICBM destruction, you shall go. I'm I mean I'm not I'm not upset. Whatever it is, what it is. Motherfuckers want to burn in the missiles? Then you I did. I, what's the video I did yesterday? Um, not yesterday, a couple days ago, the live. Um, the prophets, the men of the Lord. Um, have the light, but you it's up to you to follow it. You know, the men of the Lord have the light, but it's up to those that are watching to follow that light you know and then elon musk have put this up on his um let me get it real quick hold on let me get it real quick and i'm gonna come back to this video this dude elon musky have put up this and he, he's throwing he's just throwing throwing it right in front of people's face as to what's going on here in america but that went over a lot of people's heads so i'm just gonna read this thing that he put up on his x account aka formerly known as twitter and as you see right here, look, from Elon Musk himself, Elon Musk, right? And that's the post right there that I put up. And it says, trying to help people understand what's going on right now is like going back into a burning building to pull someone out. Only to have them keep punching you in the face and demand evidence that the building is on fire, even after they admit they can't see the flames. So this devil put that up, all right? The devil, the devil Elon must put that up, and it's absolutely true. And what he's referring to is that America is done. You know, America is that burning building, and through their predictive programming, through their um, revelation of the method, through them putting it out there, the truth in plain sight, so to speak, that's their way of them warning you. To get the blood off their hands, so to speak. Warning you, but blinding you at the same time. So with all the information that's out there, they're looking at the average people like, you know what? It's on them if they don't get it by now. And that's how we look at the average people. You see? We look at, we look at like this bitch right here. You know, talking about, um, let me burn in hell, leave me the hell alone. No problem. No problem. You know? And this video ain't for her. I don't know who she is. I don't care who she is. But this is this is admonishment for the Lord's elect. All right? It's admonishment for the Lord's elect. To show you how blind, and be thankful that the Heavenly Father and Maker is blind as a bat, like that biatch, you know? Because that's what she is. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So you got to call her what she is. It's not a woman. A woman is a, a, a female servant, you know? But she is a bitch. She is a dog, a female dog. So she rightfully earned that title. So you can't, brother, don't be nagging and trying to, you know, pull people out the fire, especially, if, you know, especially if it's going to jeopardize you and your salvation. Let them burn. All right. And the burning that's coming is going, like I said in the beginning, is by the way of ICBM missiles. That's the lake of fire that Apostle John seen and spoke about. All right. Not hell. As in where your soul go and burn for all eternity. That Roman Catholic Christian doctrine. Okay. 
then that means there's no such thing as reincarnation. That means every soul that ever came on this planet Earth and sinned, all right, is is burning in hell. You know, bugged out as doctrine, but besides the point, we know what hell is, and she's straight up saying, don't, you know, don't, don't try to save me. Don't tell me nothing about my ways. And like the video I put up, people, um, like the scriptures say, men love darkness rather than light. So this is just proof of that. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know why Christians have this mindset of, I have to save everyone. Let us go to hell. Let, let us burn. What, what, what are you and she did say Christians as far as the, the Christian church, you know, but if that's how she feel about the fluff and puff Christian church, then imagine brothers. Hebrew Israelites getting her ass how much more hatred she'll have towards the word. Because Christian church ain't nothing but a, a super duper watered down plantation version of the Bible. So if that hurt her, then can you imagine? You're so gung ho on doing this to the point to where you feel the need to push it on people, hurt people, kill people. Just because you have to learn about God. I don't fucking care. Just stop. Y'all always trying to convert a motherfucker. Doesn't it say in your religious text to leave people alone if they don't want to listen to you? Did y'all miss that part? If hell is Absolutely. where I'm destined to go, let me go. Just... Just let me go, because let me tell and you- And the scriptures say, they the unjust, let them be unjust. Oh, that's that's in um, the book of Revelation, you know? And we at, we're at that point. We've been at that point, all right? Get that real quick. And it's absolutely, it's absolutely correct. Let me go to Revelation. I think it's around, I think it's the 22nd. Twenty-two and eleven. It says, "I start at ten, and he said unto me, Seal not the saying of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still; and he that is filthy, let him be filthy still; and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still." And he that is holy, let him be holy still. You see, so when we do videos like this, it ain't to force this bitch to fucking repent. And we not forcing nobody to repent. We could lead you to the water, which I'm in front of water right now. You know, I'm in front of a body of water right now, as you see. You know, we could lead you to the water, but we can't force you to drink. All right. And there was a, there's an actual precept that the um the elder bro, Yashawama, had put up on that, on that uh, video. Now, I can't remember it off the top, but it was exactly in, in tune with the with the lesson. You see, so we could lead you to the water, but we can't force you to drink. So we can show you the word, we can show you the truth. But if you're unjust, we just got to let you be unjust. What are we going to do? You know, the Heavenly Father closed your eyes and blinded those individuals that are meant to be blind. All right, so that was that. I'll play like a few more seconds of that, and I'm going to go into the Psalms, and then that'll be that. Let me go, because let me tell you something. This shit, this earth shit, yeah, this is hell. I can deal with anything if I can deal with this. And I've said this before, if hell is the place where all of the free thinkers are, the people that question shit, the people that don't just blindly follow things, send me to hell. That's where I want to go. Let me go, please. Your religion is dying, and you're trying to fix that by converting every single person that you see. You ain't got to save everybody, Susan. Let them go. Let, let them go. The way I see it, either I'm right and none of this shit is real, I'm wrong and there's a completely other God that none of us have been talking about, or I'm First wrong. of all, quick precept came to mind. The book of Job, chapter 39, in verse 17, it says, because... The Heavenly Father have deprived her of wisdom. Neither hath he imparted her to understanding. So she don't have no wisdom. And she damn sure don't have no understanding. Everything she said was just straight up folly. It was straight out straight out of her mind. She mentioned the term free thinkers. Free thinkers. The Lord ain't dealing with free thinkers. There's only one way to think. And that's according to the scriptures. All right. And that's true judgment, true wisdom, true understanding and true guidance. Every, else, every other thing is your own heart, your own vain imagination. Free thinkers. That's the same as free will. There ain't no free will. You know? There ain't no free will. There ain't no, you know, free anything. So that whole free will, the free mindset of thinking, the free thinking, you know, 
of course it will come from you know the damn woman because the most high have deprived her of wisdom neither hath he imparted to her understanding you know and that's why we encourage you know the few sincere aquathium out there that are listening learning and sounds to continue things that you've learned you know because these women out here majority of the babylonian women which apostle i did a video on it Lord will i'm gonna watch that you know lord, lord willing later on as well but the majority of the babylonian women are going to die the mass majority of the babylonian women are going to die you know the scriptures say that it's going to be it's going to be a lot there's going to be a lot less saved you know than those that are going to be destroyed a lot less saved as a wave is to a drop okay so if king solomon said out of a thousand i found not one righteous but out of a thousand men out of a thousand women, he didn't find one righteous. But out of a thousand men, he only found one righteous. The majority of the salvation of women does not have to take place in Babylon. You know, there are women that are going to be saved here in Babylon, of course. That's part of the one-third. You know, and that's that's a fact. You know, some of the majority of them is you sisters out there. You know, those that maintain and endure to the end. But the, the other majority is women like this. You know, so no wisdom. Your wisdom is just follow the truth. Follow the understanding. Follow, follow the leadership. Follow your husband. Follow the man. That's your wisdom. And you will be led, you know, correctly if you do these things. And that, you know, that's a man of the Lord, and the Lord is dealing with that man or whatever. Even if he's unbelieving, he, he, he can be sanctified through you and through your faith, through your belief. So all that free thinking shit, that's not your wisdom. Because Satan is still working with your ass. And he's gonna make you think that what you thinking is accurate and true until you jump off your ass. You know, we've seen it thousands of times over and over again. So she's just an example of that because when that fire that she said send me to hell, once that fire, once them nukes start flying, she gonna say deliver me from this hell. Promise you. <laughs> you know that's if she make it past the famine. That's if she make it past the civil unrest. That's if she make it past these hooligan niggas out here and Edomites. That are going to want a piece of her ass. You know, she's displaying it. So, that's if she make it past all of that, she's going to wish. You know, that she didn't say what she said. But, hey, every idle word that men shall speak, they got to give account for that. You know, so, she may just make it to the missiles. So, I'll play a little bit more. None of us have been talking about. Or I'm wrong, and this Christian God has actually been sitting here watching these atrocities happen without doing anything to stop them and sending people to hell who complain about it. So I'll go to hell happily, and I might spit in his fucking face if I see his ass. If he has the audacity to be real, I have some fucking words for him. Leukemia, my guy? Like, Damn. really? Amen. Homelessness, starvation, murder, you just had to create all those things? Fuck you! Go ahead and send my ass on to hell because you're not going to get one lick of peace if I am in heaven too. I'm asking questions every single day yep. for the rest of eternity, bitch. And you better have some... Hey, she's talking about the Lord. She's talking about the Lord, the God of the Bible. This is y'all queen. This is y'all queen. For you simps out there, this is your queen. You know, this is who you put on a pedestal right here, huh? You know what I'm saying? Talking about she's spitting the Lord's face. F you mother effer. Come on, bro. You can't see that Eve and the serpent still in league with each other. This is this is a spiritual battle, man. This is a spiritual thing. This ain't this ain't a you know this ain't nothing more but a spiritual thing, bro. You know, I mean, damn. That's a lot of hatred to the God of the Bible. It's a whole lot of hatred to the Creator that created everything that she did mention. All that cancer, all that all that leukemia, whatever the fuck you said, death. The Heavenly Father created all of that. And he, he created it for people like you. You know? For people like you. This, hey, hey, and this, you know, I'm putting this out there. Of course, I ain't got to state the obvious. But you sisters, this is how you are not supposed to fucking be. You know? This is how you are not supposed to be. So if it don't apply, let it fly. You know what I'm saying? Hey, this is, this is the, this is... You niggas queens, man. This is your queen. The word queen means a whore. Dressed like a whore. Acting like a whore. Talking like a whore. You can't do nothing with nothing like this, bro. You know, you brothers, you can't do shit with a person like this. You know? For real. The only thing she good for is stubble. Missile food. You know, ICBM missiles. She's good for the hooligans. 
and the scallywags and the, and the savages that's about to get ready to start graping. Once the lights go out, <laughs> the zippers are gonna go down, and niggas are gonna go on a on a on a on a on a, on a, a rabbit, you know, just rampage. And guess what? She gonna be victimized in that time. She gonna be a victim. Every idle word, man. Every idle word. And that's why the scriptures say, "So what if some did not believe?" All right. Let not. And they also say, "Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee." The incredulity means the disbelief. Don't let the disbelief of these people trouble you. You know. She said it. It is what it is. She can't. Hey, man, she, I, this bitch ain't. This bitch is gone. This bitch is gone. Super gone. But it is what it is. There's a lot more people like that out here than we than we know. He better not be real. I'll tell you that much. This video will be a response entitled, Please Let Me Go to Hell. And that's the brother, the elder bro, Manata Zagba. This is the video, his video I'm watching right now. But um, you heard it. You heard it. And you see, when we get on Eve, that's an example for you women on how not to be. That's it. You know, if there's any of you out there that are, you know, acting like this bitch, then you lost in the sauce and the most high going to judge your ass, at least he repent. And for those of you sisters out there that are like, nah, fuck that. You know, I don't want to be nothing like that bitch. And hey, more power to you. Keep on doing what you're doing. Because judgment is getting ready to go down and the Lord is going to make known who he's been dealing with this entire time so what i'll do is i'll go to psalms 34 and like i said the point is lower the point is at 21 where i, where I quoted this uh lesson from but what i'm gonna do is read from verse 7 which is one of my favorite precepts is i start at 6 actually 7 is what i'm talking about but psalms 34 and verse 6 it says this poor man cried and the lord heard him Hold on a second. Put on the AC. I'm getting warm. It says, This poor man cried, and the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh, heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So there's an angel of the Lord, Yahweh, by Shimmy, Yahweh, Shai, encampeth, encampeth, meaning. They, they, they're constantly around you, all right? They live around you pretty much. They, they're designated to be your protector. Like the, like the saying goes, my guardian angel, we all got guardian angels, okay? That are guarding us, you know? Because to protect somebody means to guard somebody. So we all have guardian angels as long as we fear the Lord. As the scriptures say, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. So if you fear the Lord, there's an angel protecting you. You have a hedge of protection around you. If you don't fear the Lord, then you're open and susceptible to all types of attacks. Spiritual attacks, physical attacks, mental attacks. We all get attacked, but at the same time, there's angels there to help you get through them attacks. You know? And then the last thing you want to be is vulnerable to the darkness and, the, and, the, and the, the spiritual darts of Satan and just vulnerable because you leave your house with absolutely no protection. That's another thing. Pr always pray. I, you know, one thing, Apostle, you know, many things, but one of the main things that always stuck with me over the years, especially when the elder Apostle Rakai was staying in Queens with me and a couple, me and a brother, Zakar, pre Zakar, when he would always talk to us and always push um, uh, praying. Praying, praying, praying. Always, always, every time he spoke, it was all about praying. Always praying to the Lord, heavily. You know, and then one of the main things that stuck with me was always praying before. Leaving the house. No, I don't give a damn what, what I'm going to do, where I'm going. You know? Going to take some trash out or going down the street, you know, to a local store. Going to your job. Always pray. That's how lifeline to your how about Shimmy How All right? Pray. You know, and that goes for the messages being conveyed to those that are watching. Pray every day. Pray without cease, like the scriptures say. Pray before you leave the house. Pray before you. Turn on that um, ignition to start your vehicle to start driving. Pray before you go to bed. Just just keep on praying. It says, um, verse 8. It says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints. 
for there is no want to them that fear him. Right? There's no want. There's no wanting of anything to those that fear the Lord because the Lord is always going to supply. The main thing that we desire is this truth. And with this comes, this is our daily bread, but with this come our physical daily bread. You know, the Lord knows what we want and what we need before we even ask. But he still wants us to ask, you know. And that's why scripture say pray without wavering because he knows what you want. So now through your prayer, you're going to see how bad you really want it. You see? It says the young lion, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Now think about a young lion. A young lion is in his prime. They got the strength to attack any prey. But if they do lack and suffer hunger, a young lion who should who shouldn't be uh, suffering and lacking because he got the strength to take down any a gazelle, any wild beast of the field, he's a, he's a predator. He's in his prime. But if they lacking hunger at their prime, it says, "But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing, even at our lowest state, at our weakness, at our weak point." If we seek the Lord, we're not going to want anything. You know, the Lord is going to provide. That's what that's what the scripture is saying that Yahweh, Yahweh Shah will provide to those that put their trust in him. It says, come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. It's all about fearing the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. And back to Matthew what I brought out. Every idle word that man, woman, people speak, they got to give account for in the day of judgment. All right. They got to give account for that. So the scriptures tell you about in Apocrypha that the mouth, right, the tongue can do it can it can it can start a fire or it could put out a fire by spitting on it. You could put out a fire. If you get a little matchstick and it's burning, you, you, you spit on it, you could blow it out. But if you spit on it. You could just put that out. But if you blow it and let the wind and the oxygen keep on taking, it's going to keep burning. You know? So the, the power of the mouth, the tongue, you could spit on fire, you could spit on that little flame, or you could keep on blowing it and make it grow. Right? So it says, keep thy tongue from evil. Because the more you feed into that evil, feed into that evil speech, is the more it's going to grow. It says, and keep thy lips from speaking guile. All right, we speak no guile. Like the scriptures say, in their mouth was found no guile. Talking about the 144,000. Meaning there was no deception. There was no lies. All right, when we taught this word, it was strictly truth. You see? It says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Depart from evil and do good. All right, depart from evil. Evil is exactly what this world is promoting. All right, the free speech. The free will. The free mind. The YOLO, you know, that's all evil. Because these people are wicked enough. So if you tell them that you only live once, in their wicked minds, they're going to say, you know what, I might as well be all out wicked. But if you told them, now nah, you're not going to live once. You're going to come back and receive judgment. They may second guess what the hell they do in this lifetime. They may second guess. That's why we tread carefully in this faith because we don't know. You know, we don't know what we did in our past life. But we're seeking forgiveness for this life that we are living in. And for the past lives. You see? And the Lord said, there's a precept where it says um in uh, it's in Ezekiel that that um if a righteous man turn back from doing good, all his good is gonna be forgotten. Right? And all the evil is gonna be added back unto him. So the Lord's gonna forget your good works. You know, he's gonna forget your good works, and it's all about what you're doing now. It's not about what you're doing in the past, what you did in the past, as far as your good you gotta keep up the good works. Every day count. You know, you could be the top. You could do the all the good, greatest works ever. But then when you stop and you, you go back into the world, none of that shit mean nothing anymore. You know, and that's the Lord not being a respecter of persons. If he's, if the Lord was like, well, you know what? He did do that. He did do this, but, he, you know, you're two third, but he did do that. He did do this. Maybe I'll save him just because he did that. No, it, it don't work like that. And that's why we truly fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, and we pray that we continue to do what's right in his sight. All right, it says, and do good. What's good? Keeping the commandments, all right, to the best of your ability. You know, keeping the commandments. We know we can only keep it to the best of our ability. That's why we say it that way, you know. And there's certain things that we could just straight up keep, and there's certain things that it's impossible to keep. 
You know, like keeping your beard. You could, you, that's nothing. You, the hell? You know, you could keep a beard on your face. You know, not committing adultery, not sleeping with a, a woman that has a husband. You could do that. You know, not eating pork. You could do that. Putting a sodomite to death, you can't do that. You know, putting an adulterer and adulteress to death, you can't do that. Putting to death a rebellious son, you can't do that. You know? <laughs> you know, that's why we said to the best of our ability. So that's doing good. You know, and doing good is, like the Lord said to Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. That's doing good, feeding the word. It says, seek peace and pursue it. You know, seek peace and pursue it. Peace is through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right? It's through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is this word. Yahweh Shah is the Prince of Peace. You know, you got to find that peace. Like, it was a quote. It's, actually, it's an actual quote. I, um, let me see. Where did I look it up at? You know, very good artist. Hold on. You know, like the scriptures say, examine yourself daily. You know, examine yourself. Right? Examine yourself. And that's what I take from this um this quote right here by or from Marvin Gaye. It says, if you cannot find peace within yourself, you will never find it anywhere else. And there's some truth to that. You know what I'm saying? There's some truth to that. If you cannot find peace within yourself, you gotta make peace within yourself. You gotta examine yourself. You gotta make peace within yourself in your howl by Hashim You know what I'm saying? That's the fullness of this particular quote. If you find, because people would take that and say, I found peace within myself, but they're doing all types of wickedness. To truly find peace within yourself, you gotta have this truth. All right? And you gotta do the things that would that would give you peace in this truth. You know, and this truth is about peace at the end of the day. When I say peace, I'm talking about, you know. Just a, a, a sound mind Alright A sound And a good mind Of understanding That's what this truth does for you You know This this truth eases your mind from From worldly things that, that are meant to distract your mind But if you don't got this truth You really don't have peace within yourself But if you have this truth Then you can find peace within yourself You, can under, you understand yourself a lot better You know You understand Do's and your don'ts And in other words You examine yourself Scripture says, examine yourself daily to see if you be out of faith or not. Right? So it's, this is Marvin Gaye's quote again. If you cannot find peace within yourself, you will never find it anywhere else. So if you can't find this truth, I mean this peace within this truth, within yourself, if you call yourself in this truth, then nowhere else is going to satisfy you with, with peace at all. You know, you could, you, could be, you could make a whole lot of money. You could be a millionaire. You ain't going to be at peace. You could F all the holes in the world. You ain't going to be at peace. You know, you could have all the cars. You ain't going to be at peace. You know, you can have yachts and shit like that. You ain't gonna be at peace. You know, so peace is this truth. This truth is peace, right? So it says, seek peace and pursue it. So pursue this truth. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. You know what I'm saying? It says, the eye of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. So the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, which is his elect. All right, his elect, 144,000 starting with, and then you got the rest of the one third. And the eyes of the Lord are the angels of the Lord. Like the scriptures say, the angel of, um, the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. It says, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. All right, so the Lord is going to cut off those that do evil. Those that think evil and speak evil. You see like that end dub that was on the screen earlier. Disrespecting the God of the Bible. I was talking about she was spitting his face and curse him out. Man, oh man. Man, oh man. You know, and that's, that's the epitome of wicked ass Eve's mindset. You know, that's that's on you. That's on you, homegirl. You got you going to have to own up to that one. So the righteous cry and the Lord hear it. So the righteous is going to cry and the Lord is going to hear the cries of the righteous. Especially when we cry out unto the Lord when Jacob's trouble pop off. 
especially when shit hit the fan, especially when lights out, no food, family. We're going to cry out unto the Lord as we are crying out unto the Lord now. All right. We crying out unto the Lord daily. All right. We never not crying out unto the Lord. How do you cry unto the Lord? You pray. All right. You pray. You, you go meditate, stay by yourself and pray to the Lord. You know? Cry out. Some days you literally cry out unto the Lord. So the righteous cry and the Lord heareth. By doing these lessons is crying out unto the Lord. Going on a fast is crying out to the Lord. So the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. If it's all their troubles, then that includes Jacob's trouble. The Lord is nigh unto them. This is verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are, that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. All right. So the Lord is close. He's nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, broken spirit. You know, in the world, see, we came, we come out of this world. We came out of this world. This world shaped us to worldly things and like a worldly vessel into world into a worldly liking, so to speak. So when we came into this faith, the Lord had to break us. He had to totally break us and rebuild us into a newer creature, a newer vessel. You understand? The Lord broke that old us and reformed that new us. So in this truth, you're supposed to be broken down. But you're supposed to be broken down to be rebuilt. Not broken down to the point of no return or to the point of uh, no repairability. And that we had mentioned this at the camp. I remember weeks ago we was talking about that. You know, weeks ago we was talking about that. You know, there's a point where you can be broken to like shards where there's a scripture on that. The Lord broke them to shards where you can't even take a shard of it and, and do anything with it. It's just completely broken to dust. Compl uh, completely broken to just dust. And that'll be the two thirds. You know, but the elect is being broken down to be rebuilt better. The Lord is building us back better, so to speak. Like Esau used that term, build back better. Okay. It says, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. That's why in the book of Psalms says, um, the sacrifices for sin or of sin is a broken spirit and a contrite heart. O, o Lord, thou wilt not despise. All right. So it says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all. Many are the affliction of the righteous. The righteous are constantly being afflicted, but the Lord is going to deliver the righteous out of all. So however we being afflicted, we will be delivered out of it. You know, the Lord is going to deliver us out of all of our afflictions, whether it's physical, mental, you know, spiritual, financial, Whatever you can possibly think of and you being afflicted by it, the Lord always find a way to deliver you out of it. But it's all a test. It's all little minor, smaller deliverances because the great deliverance is getting ready to happen. And it's going to be when the Lord come back with them ships, all right, the chariots and destroying this place by missiles and by the laser beam of the chariots. But none of this is going to happen before the institution of the mark of the beast. All right, which is the Revelation verse 13, verse 16 on down. Okay, that's got to happen. And the, and the woman that I played that, not woman, but that bitch that I played the video earlier on, she she she's going to take the chip. <laughs> she's going to take the chip. She's a free thinker. She belongs to Satan. She's Satan's pit bull. She's going to take the chip. She's going to take the chip. You know, women that think like her or females that think like her, they're going to take the chip. So they guaranteed a spot. To see the fireworks on ground level. Okay? AKA, they're they gonna be toast. she gonna be in hell. Alright? She wanna be in hell, she gonna be in hell. The real hell, the ICBM hellfire. Okay? So it says, verse 20, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. And that's heavy because it reminds me of Yahweh Shah. Because Yahweh Shah, the prophecy was that not, um, his bone ain't gonna be broken. Because it was a Roman custom when they crucified, which is capital punishment in the, during the Roman Empire back then, right? It was capital punishment. So the Lord wasn't the only person that was crucified. You got these dumbass Christians wearing a cross. All they're wearing is a damn to tombstone. That's all they're doing. You might as well be wearing a, a tombstone around your neck. Or you might as well be wearing a guillotine pendant around your neck. 
or, or electrical chair around your neck. That was the punishment during that time, right? Being crucified. So it was common that crucifixion, crucifixion was a common thing back then, right? But it was it was signified, you know, highly because of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. And during that time when they would crucify an individual, they would um they would break their bone, their shin, to see if they're still alive. You know? They will bang it. And if, of course, if you're alive, you're going to feel that shit. You know? And they will leave you to hang a little longer. But the prophecy was, Yahweh Shah, he didn't get his bones broken. They pierced him instead. You know? So that, that scripture reminded me of Yahweh Shah. So it says, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. You know, and that's why during the Passover, you're supposed to roast the, the lamb whole. Right? You're supposed to roast the lamb whole. Whole. You're not supposed to, if you want to be technical, you're not supposed to have lamb chops, you know, lamb cuts, lamb ribs. It's supposed to be a whole lamb, which proves that we are rehearsing a righteous act, you know, and there's certain laws we can keep and cannot keep. How many of you are able to go out there and get a whole entire lamb and roast for yourself? How many of you can fit a whole lamb in your oven? Or how many, if you live in an apartment, if you live in a project, how the hell are you going to do that? You know? I mean, if you could do it, do it, but show you that we're under grace. You know? Show you that we're under grace. And the Lord, you know, like he said, you know, it's all uh, Judges 5 and 11, you know, in the place of drawing waters, there they, there they shall rehearse the righteous act, even the acts of the Lord, which is what we're doing. The Day of Atonement, all of that is a rehearsal of righteous acts. You know, us keeping the laws to the best of our ability. So this is verse 21, hence the title of this lesson. It says, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate righteous shall be desolate. <laughs> evil shall slay the wicked. Evil. What's evil? Bad times. Ill times. Right? The Lord set up evils for evil times. You got spirits created for vengeance. And that's why, man, don't be getting sorry. Don't be feeling all sorry and fucking pity, pity and when you find out some shit happened to somebody. When you find out a, a, a single woman, 35 years old, 39 years old, got into a brutal car accident and, and the fucking car looked like, like you smashed a, a Coca-Cola can like this and you see the pictures of her, eyes popping out her eyes, I mean eyes popping out her head, tongue hanging out, she's split in half and you feel sorry for her. You don't know what the fuck she did. You don't know what she did. That, it could have been a bitch like this. Talking about when she see the Lord, she gonna spit in his face, I wanna go to hell. Don't be feeling sorry for these people. If you feel sorry for these people, then you feel sorry for that. In other words, you feel like, damn, Lord, why'd you do that? Fuck that. Don't ever question your how about Shimei Hawa Shah. And don't ever question his judgments. There's a reason why shit happens to people. You just don't know at that time. You know? Fear the Lord. That's why the scriptures say, be not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. Don't worry about how this person died. Or don't worry about how they're going to die. But worry about how you... The scripture says, but where we inquire how the righteous shall be saved. If you, if you feel or believe through the spirit that you are upholding your end through faith and works and righteousness, then worry about your own salvation. Worry about how you're going to be saved. Not fucking Keisha and um Big Shirley. You know, like Apostle Ricard calls him, Big Shirley. You know, Big Shirley is, a, is just a, a title for the wicked ass Eve out here. Big ass, fat ass, disgruntled ass Eve. And Keisha is a, is a smaller version of her. You know? Like that girl on the screen will be Keisha. It says, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate righteous shall be desolate. So those that hate righteous or righteousness are going to be desolate, bro. And we're going to witness their desolation and destruction in these times to come. And rejoice. You know, rejoice because the Lord is bringing judgment to pass. And this is the last verse, 22. It says, the Lord redeemeth the soul. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants so you want to be a servant of the lord man we want to be servants of the lord we need to be servants of the lord you know if we want to make it up out of here then we need that's that's a requirement if you want to make it you need to be serving yahweh if you want to make it you need to be serving yahweh if you want to make it you need to be serving yahweh okay not your own belly not satan not your woman, not your children, not your job, not Caesar, not Jesus Christ, 
not any other religion, but serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So the Lord redeemeth the souls of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So if you trust in the Lord, you won't be desolate. All right. You trust in the Heavenly Father, through his only begotten Son, you will not be desolate because what's coming to Babylon the Great is total desolation. So that's it on that. You know, Abaratzad, that was edifying. What I'll do is grab a couple precepts from off the comment board, and that'll conclude this lesson. And to Wadi Shimi Shai, seemed like the stream went good the whole time, which is to why through the spirit, because over there, you know, better, you know, it's a little better. You know, we got the fresh air and all that good stuff, but it's all good. I'll get my fresh air later. All right. So, yeah, brothers, of course, I've seen them comments popping up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to get a couple. I know I would say I'm going to get a couple, and then it'd be like 20 of them joints. <laughs> but it's all good, you know. It's, just, it's beautiful. I love it. You know, wouldn't want it any other way. So, I'm going to try to, you know, you know, just go with the spirit. It is what it is. Brother Strive for Masteries 144 put up Jeremiah 14 and 11. It says, Then said Yahweh unto me, Pray not for this people, pray not for this people for their good. Pray not for this people for their good. Don't pray for these people and for their prosperity because why? The shit that Israel was doing during the time of the prophets was wicked. All right, read about it. Niggas was wicked, bro. You know, doing all types of wickedness. Like everything we see niggas doing now. They were doing back then, during the time of the prophets. You know, commit adultery just because it was the thousand, two thousand years ago, uh, three thousand years ago, four thousand. Don't mean niggas. Niggas was been doing wicked shit. You know, that's why. You know what? That's another reason why that book, um, the movie, the Book of Clarence is a good movie to watch because it just show you, it just show you niggas in the time during the time of our Lord. Shows you niggas during the time of our Lord. They were doing regular nigga shit. And the good, you know, ill part about it is that they made them all Jake. All dark-skinned people. Light-skinned people. You know, melanated people, if you may. They were they were all Israelites. So it gave, it gave a very good visual depiction on, on how niggas was during the time of our Lord. They even had the one part when... <laughs> this shit's part was funny as hell. That, the one part, for those who've seen it, if you didn't see it, I guess cover yeah, it's not a spoiler, but I don't like spoilers. But the one part when they went into the party and it was playing, um, I think it was called, I think the it's song is called Night Over Egypt, right? Which is spiritual in itself. Right? Night over Egypt. And who was there dancing? And I think this, this the, the the group is called the Jones Sisters. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, nothing new under the sun. Jake been doing shit like that. You know? Night over Egypt. And then who was in Egypt? Who built Egypt? It was it was the same people that was getting Getting down in that in that in that um that scene, Israelites. So that was spiritual in itself, right? For their good. Don't pray for them for their good. Don't pray for them for their prosperity. All right, to hell with them. Hold on one second. I'm, bu I'm buffering on this end. All right, I'm good now. I'm good now. I'm trying to pull up the comment, but I'm good now. It's all good. I'm going to wrap it up because, you know, I still seem like service is a little shitty out here, but. Until this left on, they have not refrained their feet. They can visit their sins. So the Lord. These people like to wander off like a place in wickedness. So the Heavenly Father is not going to, he's going to now remember their iniquity and he's going to visit their sins. All right. So I'll get one more and then I'm going to end it. I'm ended on this. GMS 13, ruler shift 4. James 1 and 2. I mean, 1 and 12. 
It says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So blessed is that man that endureth the temptation. We all meet uh, tempted, right? The crown of life. It says, Let no man the tender. All right? The Lord did what he the Lord gave Satan, spiritual demon Satan, that authority to do so. So then we get tempted. And you're going to do, you're going to blame the Heavenly Father. See, Lord, you made me do this. The hell? Yo, yo, you made yourself do that. Your own weakness made you do that. You know, you can't fall off and fall off and see, see how about you, Mr. I blame you. That's a fucked up mentality. Right? That's a, that's a non-accountability -accountabil mentality. That's somebody that don't hold themselves accountable and don't hold their actions accountable. It says, but every man, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when love hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So you're getting tempted. You know, you giving into them temptations. You're drawn away now with your own lust. All right. Now you're being enticed. And now through all of that, you conceive sin. Now you act upon your temptations and your your lust and all this other bullshit that you've been going through. Right. That's pretty much it. And plus the stream is acting a little funny now. So, you know, I got the point across. And evil shall slay the wicked. And that's the end all be all. And that's the judgment coming to Babylon. You know, the 144,000, the one third believers, men, women, and children. Shalom to you. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakathon. Shalom.